There is one star that people already can't stop talking about as they take in these new episodes of Queer Eye Season 3 over the weekend. It is Jess from Episode 5. She tells her story of coming out at age 16 and kind of being on her own ever since. The Fab Five made quite an impact on her, and we wanted her to know she's made quite an impact on us. So joining me live from Lawrence, Kansas, just outside KC, where all of Season 3 takes place, is Jess. Good morning, Jess. Hi. <laughs> Jess, thank you so much for being here. I literally just watched your episode and was crying uh, through hair and makeup this morning. So, uh, you know, <laughs> thank you. And also that, that was a struggle for our fabulous makeup artist, Natalie. Um, Jess, uh, what has it been like just for you to see the response over the weekend to your story and to your episode? Um, oh, my goodness. It's just been nothing but love. Uh, I expected like it to be a mixed bag like some people not connecting with my episodes some people maybe connecting a little bit more um but it's just been like so much love and i'm been crying all weekend because of the beautiful stories that i've been hearing from people um and i i don't know i'm just i couldn't be happier really uh well you share so much of your story um if i can summarize it basically that you know, you, you, I think you were outed or you came out when you were a teenager. Um, you had been adopted and your adoptive family basically shunned you and, and kind of kicked you out. And you had to figure out uh, what your life was going to be without a family all of a sudden. And you've been living on your own. The Fab Five talks to you about embracing who you are, finding your confidence and finding that chosen family of people that we can all connect with. Um, when you are hearing stories from other people, what are they reaching out and saying to you? Um, they're mainly just telling me their, their coming out stories, um, or about how they lost their family and had to find their chosen family. And it's so funny because I expected mainly to get, um, a response from the queer community, but I've gotten responses from everyone. Um, people who identify as straight or, or queer or, or, you know, trans, etc. When you were watching the episode back, what was that like for you? Was it emotional for you? It absolutely was. Um, I probably cried just as much as everyone, if not more, um, because I didn't remember uh, looking like that. I didn't remember uh, sounding so down on myself and saying those things. And I know that's what I truly felt and believed. Um, and so it was emotional hearing myself back in that place um, and having so little confidence in myself. Uh, it was emotional, me connecting with my sister, because we've talked literally every day since. So that was another crying moment for me. And then just seeing my friends and how they responded and were so happy for me uh, were the biggest points where I just sobbed uncontrollably. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. I mean, we saw you reconnect with your biological sister. And then I, I saw on Instagram, you guys posted a picture together. Did you watch the episode together? We did. Um, she hadn't seen the episode yet. I had because immediately when it came out, I like went in my room and got underneath my covers and watched it. Um, but I had a little like viewing party where at the restaurant that I serve at and she came down and we watched it together with um, all my close friends. And uh, yeah, that is amazing hearing that uh, you two have talked every day uh, since you, you met up again during filming. Uh, what is it that kind of was that breakthrough for you? Because you, you weren't really speaking much, right? And, and now for you guys to be so close again is wonderful. Um, I think just hearing her say that she just wants to hang out with me. I know that's silly, but I just expected her to ask me questions and want to explain more and and want you know answers and have it be a negative experience but it just felt so natural and I clinged on to that natural feeling and it's it's still to talk and connect for hours so we learned about um your adoptive family and you talked a little bit about your biological family what is the status now of you with both um like your your biological mom or, or anybody else maybe and then also with your adoptive family um, I, it's the same and yeah. that is okay with me. Okay. Well, uh, the message of the episode was so much about finding and choosing, uh, your, your family. And we saw you with all of your friends. Um, have they been blown away by this and has anybody like <laughs> recognized you on the street in Kansas city yet? <laughs> um, yes. Uh, my friends are constantly like sending me screenshots of my Instagram following. Um, and like, people tweeting about me saying that they want to know if I'm single or something. Uh, <laughs> uh, and um, in terms of people recognizing me on the street, yes, absolutely. Um, I just took a picture with someone earlier, so. That's crazy. That's awesome. 
<laughs> yeah, I it's so it's so surreal because like I'm just me and I still feel the same, but everyone knows exactly who I am and has seen my face. So Well Jess, uh, are you single? Are people sliding into the DMs? <laughs> <laughs> I am I am still single, so <laughs> Um, we saw you got a pretty significant tweet from someone who you said was your idol, basically, or at least your fashion icon in the episode. Janelle Monet tweeted at you. She posted these crying emojis. Obviously, she was touched by the episode. Uh, what did that feel like to have her call you her personal hero? I cried for 30 minutes straight, literally. Like, I could not, I could not believe uh, that she even knew I existed, let alone, like, was touched by me in my life. And, and I, I still am without words. I still go back and like, look at Twitter and make sure that that's actually a thing and that I didn't just imagine it. <laughs> I have you guys, do you think you guys will talk anymore? Did you tweet back at her? I did. I, yeah. I quoted her tweet and told her how much she's an inspiration to me and everyone. Um, but I don't know. I hope we talk more. Um, I would love to, to talk more and just yeah. like pick her brain. And have you kept up with the Fab Five guys at all, or did you communicate with them after the premiere? Oh, yes, absolutely. They have been uh, so supportive and, like, a constant uh, part of my life uh, since filming. Uh, I love them, and they love me, and it's ridiculous. Um, and I love, like, they're literally like five dads for me. Well, can I ask, Jess, I mean, again, we were so, and I know families are complicated. I mean, I everybody has issues in their own family. I, I do, too. It, when you knew that this episode was coming out, did any part of you wonder if your adoptive family or members of your family would watch it and how they might react to it? Um, yes, but also I just stayed positive and I was like, you know what, like this is such a positive experience for me that um, no matter what, I, I know that if they do see it and they are touched by it, great. If not, then that's fine. I'm doing me. Yeah, I mean, that's, I was watching it and thinking, you know, I hope her family watches this and I hope that they see that they've been missing out on time with this wonderful person. Um, so that was, I think, it, it was just, it was just really inspiring and I, I hope the best for you and your strength is screaming off the screen right now. <laughs> well, thank you so much. <laughs> Um, you also got a lot of support because you spoke about how, you know, you'd had these money struggles and you wanted to put yourself through school, but weren't able to do that. And now there's like GoFundMe's going for you. Uh, what is the status of all that? Oh my goodness. Okay. That's an update. Uh, <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't really necessarily been like checking it. Um, because I, I didn't start, I, someone reached out to me multiple. Oh my goodness. Hundreds of people reached out to me and were like, you should start a GoFundMe. We want to support you. And then one was started and there was already money on it. So I was like, okay, um, I might as well get behind this. And so I did and I have control over it. And it's, um, it is like a wave. I, I, I am so overwhelmed with emotion. Like thank everyone that has contributed. And I, I thank you for supporting me and I'm so ready to go back to school. <laughs> <laughs> well, we wish the best for you. Um, if you were going to tell anybody, if you were going to kind of summarize what your experience was like spending that time with the Fab Five, uh, how would you explain it to someone? Uh, it was life changing. I think about my experience with them every day. It goes into every single facet of my life now. Um, everything that I've learned from them is it's kind of like the energy that I put into every action that I do. So. Uh, Jess, we are so, so grateful to talk to you. Thank you again for sharing your story. Um, we're just wishing the best for you. And, uh, you know, keep us posted. Hope you get back to school <laughs> and um, hope that, you know, some exciting people slide into the DMs. <laughs> <laughs> I, will, I will keep you guys posted. Thanks, Jess.